Emirates business class is extremely controversial and for a good reason. I personally feel that their first class and economy class are among the best in the world, while their business class, well, does leave a little bit to be desired compared to their neighbors in the region, specifically on their Boeing 777s. But do I agree with other reviews to blast the product completely? You've probably seen their A380 business class before with all seats offering direct aisle access, a mini bar, and the fact that there's an onboard bar is just awesome. I mean, this is a solid product. Their 777, on the other hand, undeniably has some okay seats and some terrible ones. A very unfortunate turn of events led to me sitting in the best seats in the cabin. Bet you haven't heard that before, but welcome to the life of a full-time flight reviewer. So here's everything you need to know about Emirates 777 business class and my opinion on whether or not you should avoid it as so many people say. If you're new here, you might think, why listen to me? Who is this random dude? I'm Nonstop Dan, a half Sweden, half American who has been obsessed with airplanes for as long as I can remember. Over the past eight years, I've been lucky to call reviewing airlines my full-time job, and in that time, I've flown 150 different airlines, always self-funded. Nothing makes me happier than seeing you guys have an amazing trip after following my advice. So I hope this video helps you with your choices. I can only describe the day leading up to this flight as one of the worst travel days we've ever had. After thinking we'd lost Oscar's passport and spending a panicked 30 minutes searching everywhere for it, we eventually find it and make it to the airport with 70 minutes to departure. On this day, the crowds are crazy and signage in Tunis is bad, but that is not nearly the worst part. So it turns out check-in in Tunis closes an hour and a half before the flight not an hour as is common around the world so let's just say it caused a little bit of an issue but thank goodness the station manager literally walked past us as he was leaving the check-in desk and we found him and we managed to check in drop our bags stress through security stress through immigration and now we're finally heading to the gate for what will hopefully be a very interesting flight yeah, it would be great if Emirates sent out an email specifically notifying passengers about the 90 minute check-in deadline because I've read about those deadlines applying in some cities, but in my travels on 150 airlines, I've never personally experienced it before. Thank goodness it worked out and we can fly to Dubai. To get this ticket, I found a pretty not so widely spoken about hack for saving a significant amount of miles on Emirates business class, but since then, Emirates program has been butchered. Luckily, there's another way for you to get this, at least at a decent price that I'll share at the end of the video. Now, this Emirates 777 is a 10-year-old big boy registered Alpha 6 Echo Golf Zulu, offering three classes of service with first class at the front and two rows of business class behind it in row 6 and 7. Then there's a larger business class cabin behind the second door, although I've chosen seat 7A and 7C for Oscar and myself. Presumably due to our late check-in, those seats have been reassigned and Oscar and I have now been put in the bulkhead 6A and 6C. These seats can be assigned a check-in and are without a doubt the best in the entire business class cabin given that they offer the most privacy, being in the mini cabin and the most space being in the bulkhead. Unfortunately, that means I won't get to review the quote-unquote regular seat in this video, but worst tragedies have occurred, like ending up in one of these middle seats. I guess the question is, does the in-flight experience make up for that shortfall? Well, let's fly to Dubai and find out. We're about to hop on board and experience Emirates 777 business class, but first, did you know that contemporary art has outpaced the S&P 500 by 174% as an investment in the past 25 years? That's not the only reason why many wealthy people keep a significant art collection. It also has a negative correlation to the stock market, and we all know what a tough year it's been for investors. In times like this, I wish I could invest in alternatives like many millionaires, but obviously, I can't afford a multi-million dollar painting. Or can I? That's where today's video sponsor Masterworks comes in, a company I love because they allow anyone to invest in fine art for a fraction of the price. They've sold a couple of paintings since I last talked about them on my channel, one in late November for a 17.8% net return and one in early December for a 13.9% net return. That brings them to seven exits this year, ranging from 9% to 36% net return with nine exits in total. If you want to join me on Masterworks and try diversifying your investments into fine art, you can skip the waitlist by tapping that link at the top of the description now. So, 
I'm not going to pretend that entering this magnificent Emirates 777 from Tunis Airport is not the biggest relief ever. We had the luxury of being able to board through the first class cabin, which is entirely empty on today's flight, by the way. It's good to know you can ask the crew on board to upgrade for a moderate cost if you ever have a spontaneous urge to splurge. This is certainly one of the Emirates' more dated seats and lacks some of the luxuries of their latest 777 seats like the little in-seat bar or the nicer upholstery. Just like a 10-year-old building in Dubai can feel ancient, so does this seat. The finishes themselves are typically Emirates and for me personally, for the time that I'm on an Emirates flight, I absolutely love them. The cabin walls have this interesting pattern that's reminiscent of sand. The fake wood slash mahogany frames the windows beautifully. The bulkheads on these older aircraft have sand dunes while the newer ones feature Emirates signature tree. Unfortunately, there really is no good seat in this cabin if you're traveling alone. I guess I'd choose a window seat and just pray that no one sits next to me. For traveling with someone else, the seats by the windows are nice, but funnily enough, the privacy partition is actually too high. So even fully upright, it's hard to see each other. This is one huge difference from other carriers with similar configurations like Egypt Air and Turkish. I love me some Turkish business class. Their seats on any aircraft aren't exactly industry leading. The seatbacks and privacy partitions are so high on the Emirates 777 that the cabin is still very private by business class standards. It's basically impossible to see the passengers in the row in front of you and also the faces of those sitting next to you. Settling in, we're offered some orange juice, apple juice, or champagne. I choose the latter because, oh boy, do I need something to calm down after the past few hours of stress. Now looking around us, the Emirates 777 business class seat is unfortunately not the most thought through design wise. The only storage is this tiny compartment which is awkwardly placed under the armrest along with the charging ports or this seat pocket which is far away, but it's a little closer in the regular seats. There's a button to raise and lower the privacy partition somewhat and this cool button specifically for people working in the press. In all seriousness, this button releases our little in-flight tablet, which can be used to control the entertainment system. Thank goodness for this because the remote barely work. The seat controls are super limited in terms of customization. It can be found on your other armrest. All in all, this is not a seat to get excited about, but as long as you avoid the middle seat, I prefer this to most other cabins in a 222 or 232 configuration, just because of the unusually good privacy for this type of seat layout. As we push back, the crew introduce themselves by name and say they'll be taking care of us, which is nice. At this point, some hot towels are distributed and we settle in for the five hour flight across the Mediterranean in over Egypt, Jordan, and Saudi Arabia on our way to Emirates mega hub in Dubai. So how's the in-flight experience? Stay tuned to find out. On departure, we enjoy sweeping views of the ancient city of Carthage and the tourist hotspot of Sidi Bou Said. After takeoff, I head to the bathroom, which is pretty well decorated and stocked with all types of nice toiletries from toothbrushes to Bulgari cologne. The crew has also placed a toilet seat cover prior to departure, which is a nice touch. Speaking of nice touches, as I return to my seat, the crew is offering everyone mattress pads. Thick, juicy mattress pads. These are game changers and take the seat comfort from a six to a nine. I quickly recline to get a rare glimpse of the infamous slanted 777 bed. It is slanted, and yes, that is unacceptable in such a common business class product in this day and age, but at least the bed is comfortable. It really is. The angle is also far less than Egypt Air's 777, for example. In fact, the seat width is the biggest issue, but not being constrained by the feet or knees as is so common nowadays on many airlines makes up for that. Besides, there are individual air vents to help you control the temperature and get even more comfortable sleep. This feels like a good chance to emphasize that this video is self-funded as always and the airline has no involvement whatsoever. Now Nonstop Dan loves a good amenity kit, so it's quite ironic that many of the airlines I like the most don't usually offer any. You can often get most things on demand or in this case Emirates offers little plastic kits of socks and an eye mask on daytime flights and real amenity kits on nighttime flights. 
Out the window, we're approaching Sicily. Cue the White Lotus music. At this point, I decide to explore ICE, Emirates Entertainment System, but honestly, there's no need to do so for research purposes. I already know they have my favorite airline entertainment system in the world with an absolutely mind-blowing number of movies from literally every corner of the world. I mean, they even have a category for Swedish movies, which is just bizarre. Most of their TV shows have at least half a dozen episodes too. I choose to watch some of the last episodes of Curb Your Enthusiasm season 11 that I've been saving for upcoming flights because I don't think in-flight entertainment gets much better than this. The headphones haven't really got the memo that they're supposed to match the world's best entertainment system though. Let's just say the sound quality is not what you'd expect based on their flashy appearance. For those who prefer to work in flight, there is, of course, in-flight Wi-Fi. If, and only if, you credit your flight to Emirates Skywards, you get free in-flight messaging. All passengers can buy a full flight pass for about $17, but the speeds are not up to 2022 standards, so I'd avoid it unless absolutely necessary. Stay tuned for the meal service, which is coming up next. At this point, the meal service begins and oh boy. I personally love Emirates catering when it's made in Dubai and luckily this flight was return catered, meaning the food was flown in from Dubai and served on the return leg. The menus are really extensive, offering a huge variety of alcoholic and non-alcoholic drinks. Gotta give a special shout out to the non-dairy milk, something that far too few airlines offer given how many people have stopped drinking cow's milk. The fun starts with this vitality boost, while Oscar orders a virgin mojito, which is accompanied by some warm nuts and olives. What a combo to start the meal. About 75 minutes after takeoff, the starter is served. The flavor though is 10 out of 10 as far as airplane mezza goes. We're so used to depressing airplane salads that seeing one with pomegranate and tomato with actual flavorful leaves probably makes me a little more impressed than it should. Pomegranate is one of my favorite fruits though, so I'm not complaining. The main course is served about 25 minutes later and it's so good. Who'd have thought an airline could use something as simple as lentils to make a balanced, healthy, and super flavorful meal? Someone should forward this to, I don't know, every US airport catering company. Dessert is just as good with a berry chocolate tart and marinated orange. I love this meal and I'm not full, so I order another mezza, which the crew gladly bring me two minutes later. This is the standard mezza off the menu and tastes just as great as the last. So it would be really nice to have the food plated by crew on board, but then again, I really doubt most people care about that. Outside, the sun is set during the meal. How beautifully do these windows frame the sunset? I spend the rest of the flight working in the dark. There's literally nothing to show you, but Oscar and I were both comfortable and pretty well taken care of. There's a hot towel service 45 minutes before landing, and then we touch down in Dubai. So what are my concluding thoughts, and what do I think about Emirates Business Class? That's up next. Before I tell you how I booked this, what are my thoughts on Emirates 777 Business Class having never publicly reviewed it before? In the realm of Middle Eastern Airlines, the seat is so subpar and I really wish Emirates would replace it as soon as they can. Now personally, I definitely prefer this to SAS, British Airways, Lufthansa Group and several others even if they have better seats. Even though Emirates won't be winning awards for the world's best business class anytime soon, you just feel like fewer expenses were spared here between the entertainment, the good cater the little touches here and there like the roses on the bulkhead and the window blinds, you feel more like a luxurious business class passenger here than you might expect just seeing the seat and not actually being in the experience. Does that make sense? Anyway, the moral of the story is I won't be avoiding Emirates 777 business class and unless you've tried it and disliked it, then neither should you. Anyway, here's how I paid. <laughs> 
Unfortunately, since I booked this two months ago, their redemption has been completely ruined. But long story short, the taxes on booking this as an award ticket through Emirates Skywards were as high as just booking an economy class ticket. So I booked an economy fare and it was instantly upgradable for half the miles that I would have needed to use it as a redemption. So basically, I saved 50% of the miles and paid the same amount of cash. There is a great new way to book Emirates, and that is through Air Canada Aeroplan, which I literally talk about in every video I post nowadays. It's just the most versatile frequent flyer program. They have over 45 airline partners you can redeem points on. So for me, these points are worth more than gold. In general, this route will start at 45,000 miles one way and very minimal taxes, which makes this a great redemption. If you want to earn these points the easiest way, it's best to get a credit card where you can transfer the points to different airlines. If you get an American Express card in the US, for example, you can choose whether you want to transfer to Aeroplan or to Emirates, depending on which one has the best availability and award rates on your specific flight. I go on and on about this, but I really think you guys should check out the American Express Gold Card in the US if you haven't already. It has a sign-up bonus worth way more points than this flight cost, and has all types of other amazing perks and credits. If you want to check out another one of my favorite Middle Eastern airlines that's a little more unknown than Emirates, check out this review here. It's also great inspiration for another airline where you can redeem those points through Air Canada Aeroplan as well. So you can pick and mix Emirates or this airline, check it out and see how that experience compares.